Thank you so much. Madam President, thank you. Thank you for your efforts to organize the summit and bring about a just peace. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day when the world begins to bring a just peace closer. I thank everyone who has worked for this day, every leader, all the teams and advisors, all the states. 101 states and international organizations are now at the summit and this is a tremendous success, our success, the common success of all those who believe that a united world, united nations are stronger than any aggressor. Distinguished leaders and representatives of states and international organizations, everyone who is here today for the sake of a just peace. I'm pleased to welcome everyone to the first peace summit, which can be the first step towards a just end to the war of Russia against Ukraine. And when we end it justly and fairly for Ukraine on the basis of international law, then every nation in the world will be able to count on the same justice and fairness, on the same effectiveness of the UN Charter with regard to its rights. And then these words will once again have their full power. We, the peoples of the United Nations, determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has brought untold, untold sorrow to mankind and to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person, in the equal rights of men and women, and so important of nations, large and small, and to establish conditions under which justice and respect for the obligations arising from treaties and other sources of international law can be maintained. These are the first words of the UN Charter, but they are also the words that describe the essence of the peace formula, which became the basis of the peace summit and encouraged all parts of the world and different nations which equal, with equal respect to participate in our joint work. The peace summit, our unity here proves that the very idea of international law remains alive and effective. Your presence here proves that the UN Charter and the basic conventions are not a formality, but the real foundations of coexistence among peoples. Our principles are clear. No one had the right to wage a war of aggression against a neighbor and undermine one of the basic principles of the UN Charter, the territorial integrity of states. No one had the right to threaten the world with nuclear weapons. No one had the right to undermine food, energy, or any other security of the world and its regions. No one had the right to kidnap the children of another nation. No one had the right to undermine peace. We are able to ensure the effectiveness of such principles. These are globally important principles. And I am grateful to you distinguished leaders and representatives of states and international organizations for proving that the world may not fall into total war anymore. The war Russia unfortunately brought to us, to Ukraine, to our homes, to Ukrainian cities, our villages, and hundreds, hundreds of them were unfortunately completely burned by, by the Russian bombs, artillery and missiles. Putin has taken the lives of thousands of our people. Why? Because he wants to take over a neighboring country. I do not wish this to anyone. I sincerely wish that all of you, all the peoples of the world, every child, every family could simply live without war. And I want this for, for all Ukrainians. Ukraine had the right to peace, just like all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, we must stop this war based on the UN Charter, respect for international law, 
the just interests of the Ukrainian people and the idea of the undeniable value of human life, life, not war. Now we will focus on three points, like Madam President said, on what is useful to everyone in the world. Without exception, the first point is radiation and nuclear safety. The second is food security. The third is the release of prisoners and deportees, adults and children, military and civilians whose lives have been broken by war. We will focus on three initial points of the peace formula and in the process of working on them, we can reach an agreement and create an action plan for each point of the formula. Therefore, this inaugural peace summit includes three panels where each participating country can show its leadership. The peace formula is inclusive and we are happy to hear and work on all proposals, all, all ideas, what is really needed for peace and what is important to you, dear friends. I urge all of you to be as active as possible and I am I am proud that all parts of the world, all continents are now represented at the peace summit. We have managed to avoid one of the most terrible things, namely the division of the world into opposing blocks. Here, there are representatives from Latin America, Africa, Europe, Middle East, and Asia, the Pacific, North America, and religious leaders, 101 participants, and no one had the privilege of deciding for another. This is true. Multipolarity, when each political pool of the us is represented and has its own influence in solving a globally important issue. No one doubts that the global majority wants to guarantee all aspects of security, including nuclear and food security. The majority of the world definitely supports the principle of territorial integrity of states, sovereignty of nations, and equality in relations between peoples. The world majority definitely wants to live without bloody crises, deportations, and ecocides. And so every nation that is not represented now and that shares the same values of the UN Charter, indeed, and world will be able to join our work in the next stages. The peace formula encourages all the powers of the world to think about ending the war and to propose how to end it. And therefore, the very idea of war has already lost. Putin should switch from the language of ultimatums to the language of the world majority, which wants a just peace. Distinguished leaders and representatives of states, what exactly can this summit deliver? First, is to prove that the return of security is indeed possible. We will work out the steps with you. Second, is to provide a real plan to make every step for peace work, from nuclear and food security to the release of prisoners and deportees, to the complete end of the war without the threat of its new outbreak. I believe it's possible. Third, there is no need to reinvent the wheel when the UN Charter already defines the foundations of peace and normal coexistence of peoples. We just have to return to them. And for this purpose, we need to decide how countries will cooperate, who will be co-leaders, in order to fix and implement an action plan. These are absolutely clear and achievable goals. Now, there is no Russia here. Why? Because if Russia was interested in peace, there would be no war. We must decide together what a just peace means for the world and how it can be achieved in a truly lasting way. The UN Charter is the basis for us. And then, when the action plan is on the table, agreed by all and transparent for the 
peoples, then it will be communicated to the representatives of Russia. And so that at the second peace summit, we can fix the real end of the war. Now we are starting this path together. We must prove that the united world is a world of peace, a world that knows how to act correctly. Thank you for attention. Thank you for participating in the summit. I hope for fruitful work together, of course, together. We all need peace. Slava Ukraini.